Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're doing AFCON reaction to the round of 16, guys. Let's start with the first game we got here is Molly 2, Burkina Faso 1. So it's me, 80s from 4. Uh, Molly, man, this is a solid team. Very, very solid team. Burkina Faso, for me, were... I didn't think they were great. The first half, they were not good at all. I really thought Burkina Faso would do better. And Molly, for me, were the much better team. Let's about the own goal, man. What a horrible own goal that was for Tapsoba. And the third minute of the game to put your nation behind. Very, very bad. And you could see Mali just had so many chances that first half, you know. Um, and my issue with Mali, I've always said this before, guys, is that they're a good team. They're really bad in front of goal. They have to be a bit more clinical. And that's the reason why I said Burkina Faso would win this, because Burkina Faso are more clinical, in my opinion, in front of goal. But you could see how good Burkina Faso and Mali were in the first half. Burkina Faso really didn't create any notable chances the first half. They had that one chance from the um, the 22nd man, Traore, and Dayo there. And then, of course, in the second half, man, Burkina Faso, um, Mali opens scores again. Uh, great, great pass from Hayem and Traore. Uh, the right back, we also see the right back to uh, Sionko to make it 2-0. And it was really interesting that Basuma didn't start this game. Was Is Basuma still not fully fit? Probably he isn't, which is why he didn't play. Um, that's a bit surprising. And then Burkina Faso did get a penalty uh, of their own that was converted by Traore. I believe it was a handball. I forgot which player gave away the handball. Oh, I think it was Kuyate. I think it was Kuyate, right? Did he do the handball? Yes, Kuyate did the handball. Upstair Bertrand Traore to make it 2-1. And from that point on, Burkina Faso had a good grip. They did improve in the second half, but ultimately didn't have enough. They did score a goal in the 89th minute to level it, uh, but obviously it was disallowed as offside. So, yeah, I mean, Burkina Faso, as I said, man, just not quite enough. They had a disastrous first half, which is pretty much what cost of them. And for Mali. So, my thing with Mali is this. If they can keep if they can keep the composure throughout the game and be consistent, then I think they can beat Ivory Coast because Ivory Coast is the next game of the quarterfinals. That's going to be a tricky game uh, because we know how good Ivory Coast are, especially the home field advantage and everything. And um, it's going to be a difficult game. So, for Mali, man, in particular, man, they just have to be solid defensively and make sure... They don't make any clumsy mistakes because that goal they gave away for the penalty was very, very clumsy. It was very, very clumsy. So don't make silly errors for Ivory Coast to capitalize. So yeah, man, of course, my quarterfinal prediction video will be dropping tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and to go on to the other game we got here is Morocco nil South Africa team. Guys, uh, this might be the biggest upset of the tournament. In terms of, in terms of upsets, this is probably the biggest because Morocco were the best team at leading up to AFCON, you know. They had just come off the World Cup semifinal. They had defeated Spain. They had defeated Portugal. They had defeated um, Belgium. They had defeated um, Canada as well. But what I like about this tournament is that coming into this tournament, Morocco, what made them so good in the World Cup was their defense. Their defense is what made them so good. Their attack wasn't that great. And this is where the problem came into this tournament. Because of, because of the level field, AFCON is more... Is more AFCON... You're gonna have you're not gonna be the underdogs. Morocco are the heavy favorites, and you could see Morocco were struggling with the possession, you know. And South Africa, man, credit to the South Africa because this team on the day deserved the win, deserved the win. Morocco, yeah, they had their chances here and there. I think they had a great chance in the first half. It was disallowed the goal, but really, it was just Morocco. Like I said, man, when the pressure is upon them, they just don't perform, man. Adili, um, right there, and then obviously end of zero just wasn't great. Now second half they did significantly improve, um, you know. And I do think um, Amala is someone that can't start anymore. Amala was terrible, by the way. And the second half, man, Morocco started peppering the goal. Uh, they had their chances here and there. And then Hakimi hit the post the 85th minute. Uh, that was actually for the penalty. We'll get, we'll get on to that. Uh, the South Africa, man, they take the lead out of nowhere. Mark Pocro makes it 1-0. Great, great pass in behind um, for uh, Zueni. Zueni makes the assist there. And you can see Morocco were now in the back foot there. They had to turn it around. And obviously, Morocco, South Africa having chance after chance. Um, but you have to say South Africa were clinical on the day. Morocco just couldn't get to the end of things. And Nizir was just not effective enough. And then Morocco did get a penalty late on. Of, I think it was a handball, if I remember correctly. And I think it was Kekane. I think Kekane gave away, gave away the penalty there, if I remember correctly. Wait, no, he didn't give away the penalty. Who gave away the penalty? Was it Modiba? I think Modiba gave away the penalty. Or was it Mabala? Let's see. Let's see if I can figure out. I just remember someone gave away a penalty. I forgot who gave away the penalty. Mavala, maybe. Yeah, Mavala is the one that gave away a penalty. And Officer Archa Hakimi and Hakimi hits the post. It hits the, the crossbar. And then the other end, man, Morocco were down to 10 men because Amrabad makes a sliding challenge. 
Um, I forgot um, a goal scoring opportunity. So he gets a straight red. Initially, it was actually a second yellow, but upon VAR check, it was actually a straight red because it was a denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. He literally launched in outside the box. And then, and then South Africa, man, wrapped things up with a beautiful free kick there from Mokona in the 95th minute. So I just think it shows that what, what makes this tournament so amazing is the fact that Morocco are the heavy favorites to win this. A lot of people say, well, Morocco is going to win this easily. But remember, guys, Morocco in the World Cup didn't rely on possession. They relied on counterattacks. This game, they had so much possession, but their defense just fell apart. You know, And that's why I think for South Africa and South Africa, man, this is a team that's a giant killer, man. Because remember, guys, South Africa defeated Egypt, the last AFCON they participated in. Obviously, they didn't qualify for the last division, but they defeated Egypt. So you have to give credit to South Africa. This is a team that is very underrated. Um, and look up for South Africa, man. So in the quarterfinals, South Africa is going to be playing against uh, Cape Verde. That's a winnable game for South Africa. Winnable game. So it's going to be interesting, guys. It's going to be interesting. So join me for my live reaction, guys. We'll be starting around 10 minutes time. Uh, to break down the AFCON round of 16 games, and we'll also do a quarterfinal preview as well. We're going to have a special guest, of course. Sebastian will be there. And so, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And, yeah, man, I'm going to see you guys there for the live reaction. Peace out, guys. Peace out. Everyone, guys, like and subscribe.